So I'm going to prep this SD card with Amiga OS 3.2 using WinUAE and then I'm going to boot this in a real Amiga 1200. So I've got this USB adapter and I'm just going to plug this into my laptop here. First thing I need to do is completely blank this SD card. So I'm going to use that using disk part. I, I did originally try this using the disk management tool in Windows. It doesn't seem to fully blank the disk in terms of the Amiga part. So I'm just going to use disk part to do this. So I think you just do list disk. So there are all the disks. Uh, you can see I've got my hard drive and then I've got the, the drive that's plugged in here, the SD card. So I'm going to select disk, which is disk one which is the SD card because it's four gigabytes. And then I'm just going to do clean. Should clean that disk. There we go. So that disk has now been blanked. Now I'm going to boot WinUAE. So this is WinUAE 4.4. I'm going to boot that. And I've just got it set to A1200 with basic non-expanded configuration. That will be fine for this purpose. That's what I'm going to run it on anyway. Uh, the ROM. So I need to select the main ROM file from this disk. Uh, and this is this Kick A1200 ROM. There is a double version of it there, but this one works just fine. So I'm going to use that. I'm just going to save that as a configuration to start with, just so I can load it up later. But first thing I'm going to check is just that this works at all. So let me just start this and just see that we get to the Kickstart 3.2 screen. There we go. So there's the Kickstart screen. So that's working. So next thing is I am going to add the hard drive, which I'm going to add this SD card as a hard drive using this. I'm not going to do directory or hard file. I'm going to add hard drive and it's going to be this SD card. Now this is the first trap. And when you do add hard drive, it's coming up with the, it's finding, well, generic, it's just a generic mass storage device, but it's got this question mark by it. And that from what I could tell means that it's not going to be able to read this at all. And the reason for this is, and it might be a windows thing, um, is that you need to start this as administrator. So you need to right click it and do run as administrator. And if you don't, it can't read that disk. So that's the first trap. Now that might be a Windows only problem because I'm, I'm working on Windows here. But that's the first thing that, that um, I really couldn't understand. So now when we go to here, I'm going back. I've restarted in administrator mode. I'm going to add hard drive and this time uh, it's coming up as, as UNK, which I think stands for unknown. It doesn't know what that disk is, but that's the one we want to use. The next thing is it defaults to this UAE HF device, which you can get that to work in WinUAE, but it came with some problems later on that I couldn't solve. So what I'm doing is I'm selecting Commodore A600, A1200 IDE. I'm doing that one, and then I'm going to add that as the hard drive. So that's an important one because you will be able to get that to work the other one, but, but not um, all the way through, if you know what I mean, not all the way through the install process. So that should be it, I think. I'll add the hard drive. So this is the next thing, and I think this has to be done. So I'm going to select the drive that I've just made and do properties. So it's just coming up with all this stuff here, read, write, bootable, everything like that. That's all fine. But I think this hard disk controller, you want to select full drive RDB mode. I'm pretty sure you want to do that because I think if you don't, it won't work later on. Now, I'm not too sure about that one, but that's what I'm going to do. So I'll just try that now. Um, and that is my hard drive set up in here. So I'm just going to save my configuration again. So in just in case I need to reload this. And now all I need to do is I go to floppy drives and I'm going to, from the CD, the stuff that I copied off the CD, I'm going to select the install disk. So it's install 3.2. And the other thing, one more thing, is the drive emulation speed. Just set that up to full because it totally works and it will save you a lot of time. So there's no problem running this at 800%. So let's just start that and we should get the install disk booting. Right, there we go. So now I'm gonna go to, go to the install disk. I'm gonna go to hard disk tools and hard disk toolbox. And it should find my drive here, should. There it is, it's coming up with unknown. So that, so I'm gonna do change drive type and I just leave all this as it is and go define new and then I'm gonna go reconfiguration. This will read as much data as possible from the drive, such as number of heads, etc. I'm gonna do continue. It's gonna read this mass storage device 
and I'm just going to say OK. I'm not even going to read any of that. Uh, I'm going to say OK on that. And there we go. So it's got this mass storage device, UIE, IDE. And, and now I'm going to partition it so that I can get some partitions ready to put Workbench on. So uh, I'm going to make a partition for Workbench that's going to be uh, really small, 232 megabytes. That'll do. Uh, when I installed this the first time, Workbench actually only used 6.5 megabytes. So that was that 230 is going to be fine. This is a 4 gigabyte disk. I'm going to call this DH0, and this one's going to be bootable. Um, I'm going to do a new partition here. Oh, that turns out to be what I wanted, actually, uh, roughly that. 1500 megabytes, another partition. I'll call that DH1. And a new partition here. Oh, let's select this one. Let's delete that partition. Let's do a new one here. And I'll just make this one and a half gig as well. So I'm just making a partition to put Workbench on and a couple of other ones to put other stuff on. I'm leaving a bit of blank space as well. So I'm going to say OK on that, and then I'm going to save changes to drive. There we go. So let's just check that that's all still there. There we go. That is. So I'm going to exit that. And there we go. These things now appear on the desktop. Now, if you'd have selected that UAE HF device back when we did the setup, they won't appear here. So that was my problem. I couldn't get past this part. Next thing is I'm going to take the DX0 one. That's the small one. And I'm going to format that. I'm going to format that for Workbench. So this is where I'm going to do the install. Quick format, 231 megabytes, definitely. Okay, so I've got my workbench partition, and now I'm going to go ahead and do the install of 3.2 to that partition. I'm going to select English British because I'm British. Oh, and it wants the locale disk, so I'm just going to insert that uh, into. Here. You can see I've done this before, so these are all on the list. So I'm just inserting the locale disk. Come on, you can find it. There we go. So this is now just going to go through the install process. This is just lots of disk swapping. It might ask me where to install it. Let's just see what it does. So this program lets you install release 3.2 of the Amiga OS on the hard drive. Let's do that. We'll install 3.2. We are a novice user. And where do you want to install it? I want to install it on that DH0 workbench. Proceed. It's English British because I'm British. Uh, I don't want glow icons because it's just going to go on a normal Amiga 1200. And there we go. Now it's just now it's doing the copying to that. Well, it's basically copying to this SD card. So now it's just going to ask me for loads of disks. So it's going to want Workbench 3.2. So I'll give it that disk. And you just have to you just have to select the disk, and it should find it on its own because the Amiga can do that, so the emulator can do it as well. So this bit just takes, I don't know, five minutes or something, as it just copies all the files. If you do it at eight hundred percent speed, if you do it at the normal speed, it's going to take you a lot longer. So I think yeah, about five minutes to do this. Okay, installation of release 3.2 is now complete. Please remove all floppy drives and then reboot your Amiga. So let's just see if that works. I'm going to eject these two disks and we're going to proceed. So if all goes well, this boots Workbench 3.2. So that took about, it did take about five minutes that, just swapping disks. There we go, so it booted. So I've successfully installed Amiga OS 3.2 on that workbench partition and I've still got these two other initialized ones. Now here's the point that if you, when you if you were going to swap this disk into a, a real Amiga, here's the point where you could actually if you wanted to mount another hard drive like a, a directory off your PC and then copy some stuff onto one of those other partitions because you could basically just format this um, and so I could format DH1 as my oops 
format this as my stuff drive and then I'll have a gig and a half to just put stuff on that I could copy off my PC if I wanted to. So there we go. So I've got a stuff drive. There we go. So that's something worth considering that now you can get stuff onto here by mounting, adding a directory and then copying some stuff over if you need it um, before you transfer this over into the um, Amiga. Because one thing you might need is if you need a compact flash driver, um, that usually has to come on floppy disk, but you might need an Amiga to do that. So that would be your problem. So in theory, this is all prepared now. So I've got, I've quit WinUAE. I've now got a fully prepped SD card that I can put into my IDE to SD card adapter that's in my Amiga 1200. And this should boot what I just set up now and it should boot in the Amiga 1200. So I'm gonna try that now. All right, so here is my Amiga. I'm gonna just carefully, and I'm just gonna pop it into this IDE adapter that I've already got in here. There we go, it's in. Right, let's just plug this back in. Let's give it the boot test, let's see what we get. So something's happening. We've got a screen and is it gonna attempt the hard, I think my hard disk light might actually be, the wire might be a little bit dodgy actually. Oh, there it is. It booted, my hard disk light's not working because I think the wire is dodgy on the actual light assembly. I need to take a look at it. But there it is, that is working. And there's all the things that are set up. There's my workbench disk. So there you go, that's really cool. That totally works. So like I said, this would be one way if you did your initial setup, you could you could have copied some stuff onto, onto this stuff drive from the PC. And then you've got it all here set up ready to go and you don't have to make any real floppy disks to do it. So there we go. That is setting up an SD card for Amiga OS 3.2 using WinUAE 4.4 to get it working on an Amiga 1200.